Good morning. Well, I, as you can see behind me, there's dozens of locals who have come to commemorate and pay their respects. And I'm with someone very special this morning. This is World War II veteran Kevin Jones. This is the first time he's commemorating on his driveway. We've even got some uh, makeshift plaques of his family members, so he is still able to pay his respects here this morning. But Kevin, this is a very sombre morning and a very different way to commemorate Anzac Day. How are you feeling this morning? Uh, it certainly is different. I, I can't believe so much excitement, so much trouble everybody's gone to to make this a great day. Now, there's a lot of people out here to come and pay their respects to you. You know, what do you have to say to them this morning? <laughs> well, I'm honoured, but I think what's forgotten and during the war, so many civilians suffered almost equally with the veterans and they don't seem to get the same recognition, but it's, uh, I appreciate it so much. It's a very good point. And, you know, I know this is a big question, but what does Anzac Day mean to you? Oh, it means everything. I think it started in 1916 with Gallipoli, which was even greater than anything in World War II. But it's uh, to be a, such an honour to be remembered for so long. Yeah. Uncle Sammy's crew are many far too few. I wish that I could kiss each and every one of you. So you want to get us trampled to death, are you kidding? What's the matter, you blowing your roof?
largest raid yet by the United States 13th Air Force. Flying from recently occupied Moratai Island, bombers head for Tarakan Island off the East Borneo coast. On the target, bombs rain down on the Tarakan oil fields, a vital source of supply for the Japanese Navy and for the Japanese divisions fighting in the Philippines. oil of extremely high quality can be used by merely distilling away its water content. Because of this punishing raid, much of that oil is now lost to the enemy as smoke from the burning fuel rises 10,000 feet in the air. A pre-invasion bombing softens up Jap installations and positions on the island. timber, Borneo is the largest and most sparsely settled of the Netherlands East Indies. P-38 strafe and bomb the jetty area on the Tarakan beach where initial landings are to be made. This region is rich in oil wells and oil tanks and installations are smashed in the attack. Bombardment begins. Picture news from the Far East includes the Australian landing on Tarakan. Tarakan, a small island off the east coast of Borneo, was an essential link in the chain of Allied strategy for the reconquest of Borneo itself. Australian troops of the 9th Division carried out the assignment, 
and there was tough fighting before organized resistance ceased. With the battle nearing Japan itself, and with the great deeds of the 14th Army, we at home may be apt to forget the fighting in other parts of the Pacific. But it's all part of one great offensive, and on Tarakan, the Australians have made a great contribution to final victory. The airfield was captured, and with the help of native labor, restored for use by Allied planes, a valuable asset in the fighting for Borneo itself. Even more important, oil wells were denied to the Japs. Oil is a key to the Pacific War, and Allied strategy is aimed at destroying the enemy's resources. American torpedo boats, for example, have been shooting up installations on the Borneo coast. The magic spell you kiss. This is love, the iron rose. When you kiss me, heaven sighs. And though I close my eyes, I see love, the iron rose. When you press me to your heart, and in a world, Apart, a world where roses bloom. And when you speak, angels sing from above. Every day, void seems to turn into love song. Give your heart and soul to me, and life will always bleed. Avian Road
advance of the landing on July 1, 1945, the most intensive aerial and naval bombardment yet seen in the Southwest Pacific gets underway. Courtney is the only journalist to have a bird's eye view, filming from the open doors of a B-24 Liberator. There are about 6,000 Japanese in the area, and the Allies are expecting them again to fight to the death. The vast air armada approaches, loaded with 3,000 tons of bombs, ready to knock out all the Japanese anti-aircraft guns on Balikpapan. The naval bombardment is also intense, as over 46,800 rounds of ammunition are fired to support the landings. This rare footage shows the epic scale of the assault. The men of the first two waves hit the beaches, pouring from 91 amphibious vehicles. Bombers, American bombers coming over constantly, hour after hour. Nothing could live through it. It was hell on earth that morning. heavy naval barrage, the 7th Division makes its dramatic landing in Borneo, climaxing previous assaults by the 9th at Tarakan and Brunei, 450 miles to the north. The 7th have their eyes on the valuable oil fields of Balikpapa, headquarters of Japanese resistance in the southeast. Today, the 7th have the equipment they so badly lacked in previous campaigns. Ducks and alligators waddle ashore through the choppy surf. The heaviest aerial and naval bombardment of any southwest Pacific action had driven most of the Japanese inland, but not before they set fire to the oil wells near the coast. A grim curtain of smoke now hangs over the entire battlefield. Tanks land from their barges units of Australia's one-time armoured division, but their field of movement is very different from the deserts of the Middle East. With the beachhead in our hands, troops move forward to meet the stiffening Japanese resistance inland. Strenuous battles lie ahead, where the enemy holds strongly fortified positions in the hills. General Milford on right, commander of the 7th. Troops come across an 8th Division truck, lost at Singapore. It's a day of liberation for the native population. Their loyalty can once again be expressed openly, and it is. The enemy dug in under the intense Allied bombardment. The Australians slowly advance. By 10.30, they gain their first objective, and by mid-afternoon, they win the last ridge overlooking Balakpapan. General MacArthur now controls the vital oil fields of Balikpapan, 
and the diggers who pitched in with both fists will soon be moving on. 